Hello students, welcome to Smart Engineering Tutorials. Today we are going to see uh, Unit 4 and the topic is Satellite Communication. Satellite is communication is a branch in which communication is carried out with the help of a satellite in the sky. So this satellite communication is said to be a extension of line of sight microwave communication. So to understand satellite communication, some basics of microwave communication need to be discussed here. As the term says microwave communication, it means communication at microwave wavelengths. Micro is 10 to the power minus 6 wavelength and if you convert it into frequency, we get 10 to the power 6 that is gigahertz range. So in microwave, the frequency range is above 1 gigahertz up to 100 gigahertz. And in this frequency range, the communication is not possible through the ionosphere. We have an ionosphere, which is constituted of ions. And usually, when a signal uh, reaches the ionosphere, it is reflected back to the earth. But in this frequency range, the signals, they penetrate the ionosphere and move ahead. They are not reflected back. Also, in this frequency range, near the earth's surface, uh, high attenu attenuation is observed. So, in this frequency range, the only possible way to communicate is through space wave propagation, which is line of sight communication, LOS communication, that is line of sight communication. If we, if we see for line of sight communication, this is the curvature of earth, which I have drawn. Here, I have placed two antennas. So, due to this curvature, the maximum permissible distance for line of sight means the two antennas are visible to each other. The maximum distance is 50 km. More than this is not feasible. So, due to curvature of the earth, the maximum permissible distance between transmitter and receiver is around 50 km depending upon factors like antenna, height, transmitter output part, terrain. Terrain means the shape or the um, roughness of the earth present, atmospheric condition etc. But if communication is to be established between two distant points which means the points are farther than this distance, then how communication is possible? Some extra efforts need to be done. Those extra efforts means some extra circuits. So, a number of repeater stations are used if you want to communicate between two distant points. So, these repeaters help in communicating two distant points. And these repeaters, these microwave repeaters are circuits which constitute of a receiver. Means that signal which is transmitted, that microwave repeater, it receives the signal and it amplifies the signal. It again reshapes the signal if there is any distortion or the shape has been changed and then it is again transmitted. So, what we are trying to say that two distant points they are communicating but as the distance increases the signal loses its strength. So, it is not able to cover that long distance. So, to boost the signal in order to boost the signal so that it reaches the final destination which is at a distant place the repeaters they receive they amplify, they reshape and then they again transmit. So, it's not necessary that it, there can be only one repeater. A number of repeaters are used if the distance is large. So, I have used this diagram to show microwave communication system, microwave transmitter, microwave receiver. So, here in place I put microwave repeater. This dash shows there can be many repeaters. So, it will receive this microwave repeater, it will receive from the signal from the transmitter, receives, amplifies, reshapes and then again transmits. Then uh, the other repeater again it will receive. So, all the receivers they will keep on boosting the signal, reshaping the signal, reconstructing the signal and then deliver it to the receiver. So, signal passes through all the repeaters and then reaches the receiver. For very long distances, if we talk about very long, means from one continent to the other, intercontinental communication, 
the above arrangement which we have seen that the repeaters are placed a large number of repeaters will be required which is not which is not feasible so to rescue this to provide a solution to this uh, problem the launching of the satellite opened a very new domain with the help of satellite uh, this communication with the help of repeaters many repeaters was solved by placing a single repeater a very powerful repeater which is the satellite in the sky and through this repeater in the sky which is the satellite long distance communication could have, could uh, is possible so this satellite acts like a powerful repeater in space and gives rise to the field of satellite communication from here this problem was rectified through satellite launching and a new domain of satellite communication studies was evolved in satellite communication systems the main thing is that we have to know that the satellites which are placed in the sky they are geostationary they are placed in the geostationary orbits so what does it mean geostationary orbits it means it has to meet two conditions the first is that the orbit in which the satellite is placed it is geosynchronous geosynchronous means that it it requires the satellite to be at an altitude of 22300 miles and the satellite has to orbit the earth in exactly 24 hours which means that the uh, uh, the satellite is Uh, is this in stationary condition with respect to earth because they both are revolving at the same speed and the second condition to be met is that the satellite is placed in an orbit directly above the equator directly above the equator on an eastward heading so these two conditions are met and then only we say that the satellite is placed in a geostationary orbit and the need of this is that the earth stations means those who want to communicate with each other the users who are placed very far away so they can communicate to each other with the help of earth stations because there has to be a, a station who communicates with the satellite sends to the satellite then receives from the satellite so they are called earth stations the so first the users have to send the message to the earth station and then earth station is the intermediate between the users and the satellites they do the further work so the earth station they need not track the satellite since the satellite is in stationary position in the sky so it just has to point its antenna in a particular direction towards the satellite the unique capabilities of the satellite communication are they provide broad area coverage intercontinental communication is an example and three satellites are required to cover the entire earth the second is they provide reliable transmission links means they provide reliable communication the third is they provide wide transmission bandwidths so wide transmission bandwidths bandwidth means they can Uh, send and receive many signals video signals high data rates are uh, available with satellite communication in terms of services satellites can provide fixed point to point links extending over long distances and into remote areas where our tars installation is not complete or um, there are no phone connections so basically in the villages in the remote areas the satellite is a very prominent solution they can provide communication to mobile platforms like aircraft ships so whenever we talk about aircraft and ship they are moving platforms so to communicate with moving platforms it is very difficult so in this case also satellite communication comes into rescue because at uh, times these uh, there are earth stations at the airports the aircraft comes it wants to land they need a navigation so everything is provided with the help of satellite communication and in case of ships when they reach the port they need to uh, park there they need to means uh, carry uh, navigation mean so the ships are also provided with the navigation guide system through the satellite communication so all many problems are rectified 
by satellite communication. The forms of satellite communication. I have drawn some diagrams to show forms of various forms uh, available or types which can be possible. Here the S shows satellites. So here A and B are the ground earth stations and there is this S satellite. So ground to ground communication. A and B are the earth stations and S is connecting them. The other is communication between A and B earth stations with the help of two satellites S1 and S2. So this is called ground cross link ground. The other third one is A is the earth station and here it is a airplane or a ship. User is a airplane or a ship and this S is a satellite. So this is showing a ground and a user user relay platform communication. Here we can see there is one satellite and it is communicating with A, A dash, A double dash which are the transmitters, transmitter earth stations and these B, B dash and B double dash they are the earth station receivers. So more than one transmitter and receiver earth stations are connected to a single satellite and the use the a single satellite it can be used by different transmitter and receivers earth stations but there has to be some technique by which they can access a single satellite so they they use multiple access techniques by this a single satellite is being used by many earth stations now the block diagram of a satellite communication system is shown below here there is a user in one continent and the other user in the other continent they want to communicate so what will be the basic steps or what will be the basic block diagram how to will how will they communicate so one user will send its message to the earth station and for to reach the earth station there are terrestrial systems so they will connect the user to the earth station and this earth station is the transmitter and this is called the trans earth station transmitter is called the uplink section because it will send the message to the satellite and the satellite will resend retransmit to the earth station receiver and this earth station receiver will give back to the terrestrial system and this terrestrial system will connect to the destination user so this earth station receiver is called the downlink section so in this way this whole communication in satellite through the help of satellite takes place and to elaborate the working of this whole block diagram of the satellite communication uh, we'll need more detail and i'll be covering this uplink section the satellite which mainly consists of a transponder and some power supplies and the downlink section so three main parts which in a, uh, present in a satellite communication which you have to explain in your exam, applic section, transponder and downlink section. I will be covering in my next video. Thank you and subscribe to my channel.